I'm going to show you today how to make putubungbong. I'm going to show you the classic version and the version that has a leche flan on top, which they call the putubungbong de leche. Let's get started. Here are the ingredients. For the putubungbong, you need two cups glutinous rice flour, one cup rice flour, one half teaspoon violet food color, one cup water. This is variable. For the leche flan, you need one half cup sugar to caramelize the baking pan, four egg yolks, three fourths cup of condensed milk, three fourths cup evaporated milk, two teaspoons vanilla. For the topping, you need condensed milk, margarine, Moscovado sugar, freshly grated coconut, and cheese. Let's caramelize sugar. Here the sugar is starting to melt, so you just swirl the pan or you try to shake the pan. Right? We're almost done. This is done now. See? By the way, I forgot to tell you, this is a 5x9x3 by by uh, loaf pan. But you can use any loaf pan or any baking pan. I like to use this one because this will fit the puto bong bong, okay? which you will see later. Okay, this is done now. So let's mix the custard or the leche flan. For the leche flan, I have here the egg yolks. By the way, I'm making two recipes because I need uh, the leche flan for another project later on. So I have here the double, double the amount of that in your recipe. You have vanilla. If you don't have vanilla, you can use the rind of the calamansi. You soak the uh, rind in the mixture for about 15 minutes and then you strain it. Right? When you make the leche flan or the custard, you try to make sure that you don't use a wire whisk. If you mix it with the wire whisk, you develop uh, a lot of air bubbles so your leche flan will not be smooth. Okay, you just make sure you break the yolks and after it's mixed, we're going to strain this, okay? You don't have to mix this vigorously. I'm going to strain the mixture. Some strain it twice, you can do that too, but as long as you don't have so much bubbles, once is enough. So let's pour this. Right, I cover this with foil. You can either steam this or bake this. I'm going to bake this. This will bake for about, uh, let's check after about 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, bake this at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to put hot water. And then let's bake this for about, uh, uh, I would say, 35 minutes, okay? Next, we make the puto bong bong mixture. If you'll notice, the puto bong bong mixture is violet, okay? But contrary to what a lot of you think, it's not ubi flavored. It's colored violet because they get the rice, uh, uh, which they call, uh, in the Visayas, we call it tapol. Uh, in Luzon, I think they call it Pinoruruto or something like that, okay? It is violet colored uh, malakit rice. It's like a wild rice, okay? But since we don't, not everyone has access to that violet colored rice, they add violet coloring, okay? That is the reason it's colored, but a lot of people think it's ube, so they add ube flavoring. So I have here glutinous rice flour, and then I add rice flour, okay? Usually, the traditional puto bong bong is just made with the glutinous flour or glutinous rice flour. But I always put rice flour because it softens the puto bong bong a little bit. Okay, for the coloring, this is violet coloring. 
we will not add it directly there we will dissolve it in water okay and then water is added gradually by the way if you like you can add a pinch of salt okay there are two ways to make the putu bumbung -bung without the uh, bumbung -bung steamer one is to get a sandy mixture the other method is to get a wet mixture and then you grate it okay water is variable means you could add more or you could add less okay uh, let me work with my hands okay I'll show you both ways the sandy one and the one where you grate it first I'll show you the sandy method okay the sandy method is like this if you see those uh, people selling putu bumbung -bung, this is the powder which they put in the bumbung -bung. okay so this is a sandy method all right in case you have the uh, wet method see this one has is more wet you grate it like this see so whichever method you use whether you use the sandy method or the wet method it will all come out the same okay for comparison purposes I want to show you this is the sanding method or the dry method and this is the wet method of course this is darker because uh, it has more liquid okay um, whichever one you want to use is fine okay so, so this is more common when you see them the vendor sell the uh, putu bumbung -bung, this is what they use this one is a little bit too is a little bit wet okay we will start wrapping now if you don't have banana leaves it's all right you can use aluminum foil right first you need to brush it with a little margarine or you can use coconut oil okay this is the dry method or the sanding method two tablespoons okay this is two tablespoons okay and then when you wrap it don't pack it okay just very lightly and then fold the ends all right don't forget to brush with margarine because this is sticky rice it will stick okay And then the wet method two tablespoons Oops. all right uh, the reason we don't I don't want you to pack this because we want to recreate the texture of the putu bumbung -bung, which is cooked in a putu bumbung -bung steamer okay because if you pack it in, what comes out is the putu bumbung -bum is smooth and we don't want that look, okay? Okay, let's continue with the rest. I will make some with aluminum foil so you will see. Still, you brush this with margarine. And then here. And then tuck this in. And then here, see. Okay, let's steam our boom boom. About 10 to 15 minutes because this is only two tablespoons. I have many recipes to share with you. If you're interested, please like, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you can be alerted when a new video is uploaded. Let's check our putu bum bum. Okay. Here. See? It's cooked. 
if you don't know if it's cooked, you can always taste it. Alright? Let's assemble our puto bumbong first. You brush your banana leaves with margarine or whatever container you're going to serve this in. And then you put four of this. Then you put margarine here. Remember, the puto bumbong in itself is tasteless. Okay? And then we're going to put in coconut. Freshly grated coconut. And then Moscovado sugar. This is the classic puto bumbong. This is how it's served. Alright? This is the classic. Okay? Let's make the special puto bumbong. So, same margarine. And then more margarine on top. Okay. And then next, we have coconut. And then this time, we use condensed milk. Me, even with condensed milk, I still put some Moscovado sugar because for me, puto bumbong is not puto bumbong without Moscovado sugar. Okay, but not as much. And then next, we put grated cheese. You can put slices of leche flan. I like to do this. Right, or you can cut them into cubes and put them on top however way you want to serve this usually they wrap this in banana leaf like this and close it and wrap it in uh, craft paper and then put them in paper bags to sell All right. <laughs> 